For right now, we're going to call it a session, but I'm going to first do a dramatic reading of the Book of the Dragonborn. So sit back and enjoy your ears. The Book of the Dragonborn by Prior Emmeline Mandarin, Order of Talos, Wave Non Priori. Year 360 of the Third Era. 21st of the reign of His Majesty, Pagalius IV. Many people have heard the term Dragonborn. We are, of course, ruled by the Dragonborn Emperors. But the true meaning of the term is not commonly understood. For those of us in the Order of Talos, there, this is a subject near and dear to our hearts. And in this book, I will attempt to illuminate the history and significance of those known as Dragonborn. Down through the ages. Most scholars agree that the term was first used in connection with the Covenant of Akatos, Akatosh, when the blessed Saint Alicia was given the Amulet of Kings and the dragon fires in the Temple of the One were first lit. Akatosh, looking with pity upon the plight of Manton, drew precious blood from his own heart and blessed Saint Alicia with the blood of dragons and made a covenant that, la that so long as Alicia's generations were true to the dragon blood, Akatosh would endeavor to seal tight the gates of oblivion and to deny the armies of Daedra and Undead to their enemies, the Daedra-loving Aeliades. Those blessed by Akatosh with the dragon blood became known more simply as Dragonborn. The connection with the rulers of the Empire was thus there from the beginning. Only those of the dragon blood were able to wear the amulet of kings and light the dragon fires. All the legitimate rulers of the empire have been dragonborn. The emperors and empresses of the first Cyrodiilic Empire, founded by Elysia, Raman Cyrodiil, and his heirs, and of course Tiber Septim and his heirs, down to our current emperor, His Majesty Bagalius Septim IV. Because of this connection with the Emperors, however, the other significance of the Dragonborn has been obscured and largely forgotten by all but our scholars and those who of us dedicated to the service of the Blessed Talos, who was Cyber Tep Tiber Septim. Very few realize that being Dragonborn is not a simple matter of her heredity. Being the blessing of Akatosh himself, it is beyond our understanding exactly how and why it is bestowed. Those who become emperor and light the dragonfires are surely dragonborn. The proof is in the wearing of the amulet and the lighting of the fires. But, he, were, but we're, were they dragonborn and thus able to do these things? Or was the doing the, of, or was the, doing the sign of the blessing of Akatosh descending upon them? All that we can say is that it is both and neither a divine mystery. The line of septums have all been dragonborn, of course, which is one reason the simplistic notion of it being heredity, hereditary has become so com commonplace, but we know for certain that the Cyrodiilic rulers were not all related. There is also no evidence that Raman Cyrodiil was descended from Elysia, Although there are many legends that would make it so, most of them dating from the time of Raman and likely attempts to legitimize his rule. We know that the blades, usually thought of as the Emperor's bodyguards, originated in an Avakir, or Akaviri, Crusaders, who invaded Tamriel for obscure reasons in the first in the late first era. They appear to have been searching for a dragonborn. The events at Pale Pass bear this out, and the Akaviri were the first to reclaim Raman Cyrodiil as Dragonborn. In fact, it was the Kaviri who did the most to promote his standing as Emperor, although Raman himself never took that title in his lifetime. And of course, there is no known hereditary connection between Tiber Septim and, many, and any of the previous Dragonborn rulers of Tamriel. Whether there can be more than one Dragonborn at any to any time is another mystery. The emperors have done their best to dismiss this notion. But of course the imperial succession itself means that there are at the very least there are two or more potential dragonborn at any time. The current ruler and his or her heirs. 
The history of the Blades also hints at this, although little is known of their activities during the interregium between Raman's empire and the rise of Tiber, Se Tiber Septim. Many believe that the Blades continued to search out and guard those they are believed were, or might be, dragonborn during this time. Lastly, we come to the question of the true meaning of being dragonborn. The connection with dragons is so obvious that it has almost been forgotten. In these days, dragons are a distant memory. <laughs> we forget that in the early days, being dragonborn meant having the dragon blood. Some scholars believe that that was quite that was meant quite literally, although the exact significance is not known. The Nords tell tales of dragonborn heroes who were great dragon slayers, able to steal the power of the dragons they killed. Indeed, it is well known that the Akaviri sought out and killed many dragons during their invasion, and there is some evidence that this continued after they became Raman Sirodil's dragon guard, again the connection to dragons, the direct predecessor to the blades of today. I leave with you that it is known as the Prophecy of the Dragonborn. It is often said to originate in an Elder School, although it is sometimes also contributed to the ancient Akaviri. Many have attempted to decipher it, and many have believed that, it is, that its omens have been fulfilled and that the last advent of the last Dragonborn was at hand. I make no claims as an interpreter of prophecy, but it does suggest that the true significance of Akatosh's gift to mortal kind, and yet has yet to be understood. When Misrule takes his place at the eight corners of the world, when the brass tower walks and time is reshaped, when the thrice blessed fail and the red tower trembles, when the dragon ru born ruler loses his throne and the white tower falls, when the tower lies sun the snow tower lies sundered, kingless, bleeding, the world eater wakes and the wheel turns upon the last dragonborn.